This video is sponsored by Brush Galaxy. Okay, welcome to another iPad painting tutorial. On today's tutorial, I'm gonna be painting a misty morning sunrise, reflections in water and stones in the water and that type of thing. So as usual, I'm using the app Procreate on the iPad. And if you want to follow along with the exact colors that I'm going to be using for this tutorial, then in the video description, there is a link to my Patreon page and you can download the file there for free. Also in the description next to that link are the codes, the hexadecimal codes. You go to the value section within the colors. Here is the hexadecimal section. Each of the colors has a code, type them in one at a time, press enter. Color appears up here, tap it into your palette area and you can construct it yourself. In terms of the brushes, I'm going to be using soft brush within airbrushing and I'm also gonna be using the medium brush within airbrushing. I may use the medium hard brush, we'll see later on, but probably those two brushes will do for the majority of the scene. Now, if I do add any more textures, then I'm gonna to go to the artistic brushes and I'm gonna use this brush, which is called hearts. I may add some tree elements on the horizon. That texture will probably be good for that. Now, if you follow along and you're really happy with your results, then do make sure to follow me on Instagram and tag me when you post your version. Or also you could join my Facebook group and the links for both those things are also in the video description below. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, on my first layer, go to my colors. I'm gonna pick the first color on the top row. I'm gonna drag that color into my canvas and it just fills and floods the canvas. Next thing I'm going to do is create another layer. So this is now layer two. Go back to my colors and I'm gonna choose the second color along. Go back to my brushes, back to the airbrushing. I'm gonna use the soft brush and I'm gonna turn the size of the brush up to about 15%, 15% there and about 50% opacity on this slider. So I'm gonna leave the top section with the background color. So just about here, I'm going to add that second color. I'm gonna do that a couple of times. Then I'm gonna go back to my colors. I'm gonna pick the third color in this time. And just at the bottom section of that color, I'm going to do a couple of lines of that too. Now I'm gonna go straight to my adjustments, straight to the Gaussian blur. I want to blur the entire layer. And I'm just gonna slide it across to about 40%. I'm gonna go back to my layers, create a new layer. This is now layer three. Go to our brushes, we're using the medium brush. I'm gonna put the, or rather the size, quite high at about 15% again but we're gonna put the opacity at 100%. Now, I am gonna use the property layers, or the layer properties rather. I'm gonna go within the layer and actually turn the opacity down. But to begin with, I'm gonna use it at that 100% opacity. And I'm just going to draw some kind of background feature like this. It doesn't matter if you have to go over it a couple of times, just to get the general in. In fact, we may as well take that color all the way down. Now I can reduce the size of that brush to about 3% and I can really more precisely go in now and just shape that background feature to be the outline that I want. Sharpen it up in places. But we're not gonna to worry too much about it because it's gonna be really quite a subtle feature because what we're gonna do next is we're gonna to go to the layer, tap on the N and just reduce the opacity of that really quite considerably down. We're gonna put it at around the 30%. We wanted to push that back and we're gonna add more colors over the top so that will continue to push that further away. We'll go back to our layers, create another layer. Back to our colors, we're gonna use the fifth color along this time. We're going to be still using the medium brush, but we are going to keep it at a slightly lower size. So we're gonna put it at the 3% size still and we'll keep it at the 100% opacity. Again, we may use the layer opacity just to shift and change this. But to begin with, I'm just going to start placing in some blobs and shapes along that area, just below where we had the previous feature. And I don't care what's in that section, we're gonna pretty much delete that anyway. could even drag that color and just into that section, slide it across as well. Okay, now I'm gonna switch brushes at this stage and we're gonna to go to the artistic brushes and we're gonna use the hearts brush. I'm gonna turn the size of that really quite low to about 2%. 
for the opacity up to 100% again. And just along the edge, we're going to use this just to create a broken texture. In fact, we could even try it a little bit bigger in places, maybe just towards the lower end of 3%. And we're going to use it to create the sense that there's foliage, there's clumps of trees and organic things in the background there. Not worried about that section, I just want to create it over here. Next thing we're going to do is going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur again, again the whole layer, and we're just going to slide it across to about two and a half, three percent actually, looks pretty good. We're going to go to the layers. We're working on this layer, we're going to tap on the N and just turn the opacity down again to about 50% in this case. Now you'll notice I'm only using pretty straightforward brushes within Procreate, they're all the free brushes. But if you want to experiment with different kinds of brushes, then you might want to head over to the sponsor of this video, which is Brush Galaxy. It's a brilliant brush subscription website service with over 20,000 premium Procreate brushes. You can save over 90% the cost by subscribing and paying monthly. And it's got tons of different categories such as portrait, pattern, texture, nature, and loads more. If you subscribe today, you get the first seven days free. You can unlock up to 12 brush packs for free worth over $300. The links are in the comments and also the video description. So the next thing we're going to do is create another layer. So this is layer five. I'm not going to change brushes. So just to remind you, I'm still on the hearts brush. We're still on 3% size and we're on 100% opacity, but it's a new layer. And just a little bit lower down from the previous layer, we're gonna start building in some more features. So maybe some bushes, maybe they go above everything else. So we can use more of a tapping motion just to help increase the gaps and the breaks in that texture. Create a variety of height. We're getting things closer to us now, so they're gonna be, you know, it's gonna be easier for them to achieve greater height compared to other things in the, in the landscape. I'm not going to worry too much about that. That will do for that particular layer. Again, we're going to go to the adjustments, the Gaussian blur, the layer properties, or affect that whole layer rather, and just slide it across to about the 2%. We're going to go to our layers, create another layer. So, so far we've used the first five colors and we've got two more slightly warmer colors. So we'll go for the sixth color. So the second in from the right. We're going to go back to the airbrushing and the soft brush. We're on this new layer six, and we're gonna put the size at around 5%, but the opacity really quite low at around 10% opacity. And with this, we're just gonna start building in some warmth at this lower section, especially over at this side. Then without changing layers, we're gonna skip that color for now. We'll come to these warmer colors. I'm gonna go for the second color in, which is that second yellow color. And I'm going to start building in some of this and I'm doing it in circular motions. Again, we're still on the soft brush, but I'm starting to just build in this light yellow color just to break up some of this area. I'm gonna to go to layer four. I'm gonna create another layer and you'll see it's now creating a layer between layer four and between layer five. I'm going to not change brush, but I'm going to repeat everything I just did. So now what you'll see is it's only adding yellow, but it's going behind this silhouette, which is perfect. I'm actually going to increase the brush size to around 7% and continue. Again, it's still on the low opacity of 10%. I'm going to allow that to reach further into the sky like that. I'm going to go to the next layer down. So go to layer three, add another layer. And again, this is now sandwiched between the next two layers. So we had that yellow color between layers four and five, and this layer is now between layers three and four. And we're gonna do something quite similar again. Just in this area, start to build it up. And on this layer, we're actually gonna start building in where the sun is going to be. 
So I'm going to move along to the white color. I'm going to go to my medium brush. We're going to put it at around 6% size and 100% opacity. And we're just going to put the sun somewhere in this region. So we're going to tap a few times until we get a nice vibrant look for the sun. But we can push it further than that anyway. We can go to the adjustments, go to the bloom effect, affect the whole layer and we can slide it along. You don't have to go too far to about 30% really is going to work well for that. I'm going to create another layer, but this one I'm going to put underneath layer eight. I'm going to go back to my colors. I'm going to pick this yellow color next to the white. I'm going to increase the size of my brush to 11% size. And I'm going to tap in the middle of that sun area. And this is just going to help spread that yellow effect to a further area. I'm going to increase the size to about 15% and tap it a few more times and then to about 20, actually 30% size and tap it a few more times, just a couple of times. Then we're going to go to the adjustments, go to the Gaussian blur, affect that whole layer and just blur it in a little bit to about the 15%. I'm going to keep repeating that process, but I'm now going to do it next with the white. So I'm not changing layer. I'm still going to be on layer nine. I'm going to turn it back down to somewhere around 10%. Tap it a few times again on that sun. Just really build that glowing effect. Go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and fit the whole layer. And just again, across to about 15% this time. I'm going to go create another layer, but this time I'm going to put it underneath layer nine. So you can see we've got sequential going down to eight, nine, 10. I'm going to go back to my colors, that yellow color, increase the size to about 15% again, and then just tap it a couple of times in that area. Gaussian blur it, so adjustments, Gaussian blur, affect the whole layer and just soften that in a little bit. We really just want to spread that powerful sun effect. I'm just trying a few different techniques just until it looks correct. I'm starting to get a bit happier with that effect now. Now I'm gonna go back to a combination of this strong yellow orange color and the color that was up here on the top row. So I'm gonna to go to that yellow color first. We're gonna use the soft brush and I'm gonna find wherever that tree layer was. So I think it was layer five, it was. I'm gonna to go to layer five, tap for another layer, and it puts it immediately above that layer, which is where we want it. I'm gonna make sure the opacity is really low. It's about 5%, so it's super low, just so I can start to build it up gradually. And I'm just gonna tap over that area just to start to soften it back. Just to subdue it, add that warm influence. So that's quite strong yellow. So I'm now gonna subdue it back with the second color from the right on the top. And I'm going to bring that into the area too. And bring that all the way across as well. And I can extend some of that a little bit further down, like so. I'm just going to decrease the size of that brush to about 3% and the opacity up to about 15%. And with that soft brush, I'm going to just extend some of this area, sharpen it up a little bit, join it and fuse it with that area and just bring it all together a little bit. I'm gonna to go to my smudge tool. Let's check what it's on. So that's a bit too much. So we're gonna reduce it to the medium brush we're gonna put it at around 2% and we're gonna have it quite strong. So not quite 100%, but about 80%. And I'm just going to nudge some of this layer up in a texture, just so it doesn't look too soft focus. It doesn't look too flat. So we're creating a little bit of noise along that edge. If I zoom in just a little bit, you'll start to see it more. Like so. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my layers. I'm gonna to go to the very top layer. I'm gonna create another layer above that. I'm gonna do some more foreground features now. So I'm gonna to go to this last color on that row. And if I just turn the opacity up, you can see it's gonna appear quite a bit stronger. I'm gonna to go to our brushes. I'm gonna put it on the medium brush. We're gonna have it at around 3% size and not quite 100%, so about 80% opacity. We can all always turn the, the strength of that layer down anyway. So I'm just gonna go back to layer five. And you can see here that it, it kind of fizzles out here. So I'm just going to go to my smudge tool again. Again, it's still on that medium brush. We're gonna turn it up to about 4% size. It's still pretty strong at 80% opacity. So I'm just gonna use it now just to push that bottom edge to 
create a nice soft edge at the bottom section there where it joins the land, the water, etc. Okay, I'm going to create another layer, but I'm going to do it at the very top. So I'll go to the top layer that we already have, click the plus symbol, we've got another layer straight at the top. We're going to use this last color here, but we're going to use it carefully. So we're on the 2% size, we're on the medium brush, and we're going to put it at around 30% opacity. We may build it up from there, but this is a starting point. So we're just going to bring it in from that edge. Now, if you're struggling with the line to begin with, we do want it quite straight. Just bring it across until you're happy with you've got it there and hold it, it should snap into a straight line. That's going to give us roughly the bottom edge. It's mainly only going to be used for this section of it, but it's very useful anyway. And then at about this point, I'm going to start building up the strength, the detail of this part. Go over it a few times, just start to build up a feature that's coming into the scene here. Go over it a few times. Again, we can use the layer properties actually reduce the opacity on this if we need to, or we could use the eraser to knock it back. I'm going to go to the smudge tool again, just for that bottom edge, just to soften it in if it looks a little untidy. Don't worry too much if it starts to create a wobble because we're adding a mist effect anyway, so that kind of works for what we're going for. Back to the brush and we'll actually change to the artistic and the hearts brush again. It's, it still should be selected and it's probably still on the same setting. So yes, it is 3% size and 100% opacity. So we'll just dial that bit back to about 80%. And we're gonna start adding some foliage or some even closer to features here. So maybe some bushes, small trees, something like that. Back to the smudge tool and we can start doing similar to what we we're doing before where we're just going to have it on a low size but a relatively stronger 80 percent opacity and with this smudge tool just as this low size and strong we can start to nudge up some areas here again just to create some more interesting textures again something like that then we go back to our brushes, back to the artistic, or sorry, the airbrushing, back to that medium brush. Probably maybe create another layer now, so layer 13. And maybe we could have some more features here, but a little bit closer. Maybe some things just sticking out in the water. Again, with the smudge tool, you can just, the bottom edge, just blend that in a little bit. Doesn't really matter. Now what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm going to go to my wrench symbol. I'm gonna to go to the canvas and I'm going to, sorry, I'm gonna to go to the add symbol. I'm gonna copy canvas, tap it again, go back into it and paste. Now, if you go to the layers, you'll see on the very top layer, we have the entire image. Now you won't see it when I untap it and when I tap it again, because we've got the same whole image represented in all those layers. Now the advantage we have if we've got it on a top layer now is that we can manipulate that entire image and we can use it in different sections. So I'm going to use what we've already created to create a reflection in the water that we've got here. So I'm going to go on the transform. I'm going to flip it vertically. But the problem with that now is that we've got the bottom section that we've painted in completely obscuring the rest of the painting. So it may be a bit confusing to understand what I'm saying, but don't really worry because we're still on that top layer, which you, you might be able to see is now in upside down. We're gonna to go to the selection tool. We're gonna to go to the rectangle and we're just gonna, outside of the frame, drag it until we get to this section where it joins about there. Now we've got that, we can go to the layer and we can press clear and hopefully now you're starting to see the effect that I'm going for, but we do need to still move it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move up to about there. I think that works for us. Deselect it. And the next thing we're going to do is going to use the eraser 
at around 3% size and around 50% opacity. And I'm just going to start to remove some of that top section. And we want to start revealing the image that we'd actually created for the original part of the painting. So we do want to use some of that reflection, but we'd want to maintain the image that we'd actually originally created too. So we're just deleting some of it to reveal the new things that we had added. So now we've got the benefit of some of the image reflected, but we have also reclaimed the bits that we'd actually deliberately put on there ourselves. The next thing we're going to go do is we're going to go to the adjustments, going to go to motion blur, affect that entire layer and just slide it across a little bit. Now with motion blur, you can actually rotate it until you're happy with the effect and you can dial it back or forwards. You can see the blue bar at the top, so it gets really strong or it's almost nothing when it goes back to the beginning. So you decide where the correct strength is going to be. I think for me, I'm going to have it as around 30% and I'm just going to angle it because it was originally like this. I'm going to rotate it until it seems to be more pointing downwards like that. So I'm on that top layer, but I feel like the, the drama and the, the impact of that reflection needs to be more broken and dispersed. So I'm going to go to my smudge tool. I'm going to go to the medium hard brush. I'm going to have it at around 2% size and 100% opacity. And I'm just going to take this reflection of the bright sun and I'm going to start dragging it to extend its impact really. And I'm going to start just disrupting it. Obviously in water you'll get ripples and disruptions and distortions. So I'm going to start increasing it upwards and then left to right. So I'm dragging it up into the new area and then left and right, I can just start to break it up. And I can also go back to my colors and I can manually put it in. So I'm going to go with the white and I'm going to go back to my brush. I'm going to go to the medium hard brush do the same thing again with the 2% size, 100% opacity. And again, I'm just going to start adding some of this white in here. Now there's not enough yellow in that section yet, but that's fine. We're going to add some of it in a second, but let's get the white to begin with. So I've just been working adding white onto that very top layer, but I think actually what we need to do is create a new layer and I'm going to use the yellow third one in, we're going to go to our soft brush, increase the size of the brush to about 8%, but really turn down the opacity to about 5%. And I'm just going to start going over this area and building up the impact of that yellow. So we'll start with the brightest yellow, extend its impact in the water, especially go to the slightly more intense yellow, reduce the size of that brush to about 3% and just more specifically, start to drag it across. Now, having had the yellow, I've realized now that we're missing a bit of a reflection for the features that are there. So let's find the layer that has that property on it. So it is layer 12. So we'll go to layer 12, duplicate it. The top version, we're gonna to go to the transform and we're gonna flip it vertically. And we're just gonna, from outside that shape, drag it down so it reflects in this section. So join it up so we're going to get that mirror impression. Go to the adjustments again. Go to the motion blur again. Again, affect that whole layer. And we're just going to slide it across, find the right point, and then rotate it to perhaps, perhaps somewhere around the 25% and, and rotate it so it seems to angle downwards too. So if you can find that roughly the right point, it seems to reflect those bits of information. I think that works. Back up to the top layer. Let's put it back on. Now, I have actually obscured more than I intended to there. So we can go back in there with the eraser. It's not a problem. We're on the soft brush eraser and we've got about 4% size and 50% opacity. And we'll just start to remove some of the, the areas there that we've gone a little bit too much with just to reveal that reflection again. Okay, I'm going to come back to this area, add a bit more yellow and warmth, but I'm going to add a foreground feature now, which is going to be some rocks. So we're going to create another layer on top of everything else, which is layer on the very top, which is layer 17. I'm going to go to the strong colors that are here. So I'm not going to use the black. I'm going to use the next one, which is very dark. We're going to use the medium brush. 
put it at around 3% size and 80% opacity. And I'm just going to create some angular shapes to begin with. Create a feature that cuts across. Some rocks. Maybe use that in combination with the medium brush and razor as well. Just create some more gaps. You don't want to go overboard with it, perhaps. Tidy up that bottom edge. Back to the brush. Find the combination of rocks that's really going to work for you. We can duplicate that layer, transform tool, flip it vertically, move it further down so we create a nice reflection of all of those bits. So the bottom half of that, we can go perhaps to the smudge tool, have it at around 2% size and 50% opacity, and we can just left and right start to blur and disrupt the bottom half of that so that it looks like slight disruption in the water is just interrupting that reflection. Now you can decide how much you want to do that. I feel like I've done that too much. So let's backtrack until you're happy. So perhaps turn the size of the brush down even more to the lower end of 2%, up to about 60% strength, and just sort to push it in from some of the edges a little bit on both sides. Zoom in a bit. Just so you achieve the look that you're happy with and you're going for. Now we've got other colors here too, so we can use some of these lighter colors. We've used the two there. We're gonna go for some of the other colors back to the first layer of the rocks. And we're just gonna use it to start adding some highlights into the rock features. Because obviously we've got strong, quite a strong light source. So we'll put it down to 2%. Maybe the opacity needs to be lower than that to about 20%. And we're just gonna start building in some texture into those rocks, highlights. Maybe we could even alternate between that and the black just to create some shadows. Tell you what I'm going to do, I'm going to merge those two layers together so it becomes one feature. Now we can really start to build in some of the shadows in some areas too. Now it might be that you want to almost create like a, a bottom edge here which juts out and you could have some rock features here that then you're gonna reflect them from that new line that you've just created. Again, back to the highlights. Start to add some highlights in the mix too. I'm just doing this fairly quickly. With all my tutorials, I go for the overall effect, spend the time on it if you want to, build up the drama, build up the realism and the specific textures and details if that suits you. So I'm gonna go back to this section. If I just reduce the size, go back to the layers, you can see on this layer where I inserted the image. So I'm gonna go back to that and add a layer on top again, go back to my colors, go back to these yellows. And I'm just gonna, with the soft brush, at around 4% size and 20% opacity, just start to build up some of the yellow in this area. Just gradually push it more and more in that direction. And I don't want to obliterate the reflections there, so I need to be a little bit careful. I'm going to go back to this colour at the top here. Reduce the size to about 3%, the opacity up to around 15%. And I'm just gonna use it to start bringing down, especially when there's a bit of a reflection that we want to exaggerate perhaps. Features in the water, just bring down and integrate some of this slightly warmer color. So looking back through my colors, I'm gonna use this second color in on the top row. I'm gonna reduce the size of the brush to around 2%. The opacity quite low, it's about 15%. And I'm just gonna start bringing in one or two features just to disrupt the flatness of sections of this water just to create the sense that there's friction movement turbulence in that water just a little bit add a bit more realism i'm 
maybe a bit more on this top section too. I'm not gonna change layout, I'm just gonna use this white, same brush, 2% size, 15% opacity, still on the soft airbrush. I'm just gonna add a touch more intensity. In fact, we will turn it up to about 50% opacity and just add a bit more intensity of that bright white in this area. Just some extra broken white points. So on that top layer, I'm just gonna go in with, not the black, but the next one across. Again, with the medium brush, about 1% size, top end of 1% size, and about 50% opacity. I'm just gonna create some little ducks in the water, or the suggestion that there's something there anyway. I don't, really don't want, don't intend to get into the detail with these, just the suggestion. Maybe even a couple of items in the sky as well, so maybe the suggestion of some kind of birds up there. Okay, I'm going to leave that particular tutorial here at this point. If you've enjoyed following along, make sure to tag me in any versions that you post online, mainly so I get to see them and I can give you feedback. I really enjoy that. If you haven't already pressed the bell notification button, do remember to do that to make sure you do get notified of future tutorials. Really help the channel out if you would press the like button and perhaps even leave a comment for suggestions of things you might want in the future as well. Okay, thanks for watching. See you back here soon. See you later.